Hey guys, Ultra Maximus here. Give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. And jump over to Facebook and like my page to upload your video links, pictures, and join the conversation there. Click on the links in the description below. Hey guys, now follow me on Instagram at Ultra Maximus Reviews and Twitter at Ultra underscore underscore Maximus. Links in the description below. Are you the key master? I am Zoom. I am the gatekeeper. Misa Jar Jar Binks! So she's a dog. It's Bridget Nelson. Are you a god? No, sir, no. Then. Dumbass. When someone asks if you're a god, you say, Yes! This sucks. Who you gonna call? Maximus back with another 31 Horror Toys in 31 Days! And today we're going to take a look at another Ghostbusters Plasma Series figure. Actually two of them. It's a two for one day. It's Dana Barrett all possessed by Zool and Gozer the Gozerian. Now these are the final figures in the uh, Hasbro Plasma Series line for Ghostbusters for this year. They come with a Build-A-Figure to uh, build Vince Clorthos. Like I said in the previous video, there is a Tully and Zool 2-pack that either is coming out or has just been released at the time of this video. I'm not really sure. I have not seen it out and about yet, and I expect if I do see it, it's going to be over at Target. So looking at the figures, again, very similar to what we got with the other figures in the wave. Um, the box itself, very reminiscent of the little jumpsuits or flight suits that they wear. It's got the names of the characters like little badges uh, down at the bottom. So there we have Gozer. Um, one thing I did notice uh, on this side, I didn't on the other package. It's got the stripes in black, very similar to the ghost strap. And then the side of the package there has got like a, a proton uh, diagram, which is very cool. And then the sides of the boxes, again, it just has the boys right there. And then here is Dana looking all kinds of possessed, which is interesting. So yeah, there she is back of the package again. Very similar to the others, we get a little proton stream to the figure, we get little write-ups on them, and then it's going to build a ghost instead of build a figure. So here is uh, the write-up for Gozer, if you want to pause and read that, you are more than welcome to. And then here we have the write-up for Dana, if you want to pause and read that, you are more than welcome to. And it's kind of cool to see the ladies uh, get added to this line, I guess. These uh, three figures we'll take a look at today are the quote-unquote ghosts, even though Dana's just kind of possessed. And then Gozer's got some electrical effects that look like they might be reused from Marvel Legends. I guess we'll see when we get it out there, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the packaging. Let's go ahead and get the ladies out of the box here and see what we think. Oh, and 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 we're gonna we're gonna build Vince Clorthos, so that'll be fun now, won't it? And here we have all the ghost figures out of the packaging, and, I, you know, they look pretty good. I'm definitely digging them. I will say this, straight out of the gate, uh, the two lady figures stand way better uh, than the Ghostbusters figures. There's something about those boots that just, I don't know, uh, it's, it's kind of hard to get them to stand upright, where uh, these two stand perfect. And maybe that's a QC issue on my figures, I don't know. Now, uh, Dana here comes with no accessories, 
except for uh, the body to Vince Clorthos. That's all she comes with, which is a bit disappointing. I don't know what else you would have come with her. Maybe the eggs or something. Her grocery bag from the movie. But when she's in this form, she really doesn't have anything for that. Um, maybe some lightning effects to put on her as she's transforming into Zool. That would be kind of fun, I suppose. And then Gozer the Gozerian here, she comes with some alternate hands. Um, I initially thought that these were going to be um, some uh, Marvel Legends uh, pieces that you just put around the hands, but they are not. And they are not like Electro pieces. Um, they're the same kind of style, but the hand sculpts are for Gozer. Uh, it's got the little warts and everything on there, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, to be honest, I would rather, instead of getting these, I think I would rather have had um, effects to actually clip onto her hands. But I guess it's six, one half a dozen the other way, right? Now, Gozer comes with the head of Vince Clorthos, which is kind of funny. It looks like you're mounting this on a wall like she hunted him or something. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. So here we have all the pieces to build the demon dog. So I guess we'll go ahead and do that on camera here. Uh, let's see here. So this is going to be the hind leg, it looks like. It goes here. If I can pop it into place. Ugh. There we go. Huh. No pop, it just kind of goes in. That's interesting. And then here's the other leg. All right, so there's that. That was a little more difficult than it should have been. Uh, let's see, that looks like this one should go over here. That one went in really, really nice. And this one went in very, very nice as well. And then it's time to mount the head onto the demon dog. All right, so there we go. Let's get him all flat-footed. And here we have our demon dog. So yeah, that, that actually looks pretty decent. I'm liking it. I do have the uh, Diamond Select Ghostbusters uh, demon dog somewhere. I don't know where it's at, though. It's in another box. And at some point, I'd like to compare that figure to this one. Uh, this one's definitely a lot smaller than the other, but I almost feel like this looks better. All right, so as far as articulation goes on this particular figure, um, the mouth does move open and closed, which is nice. You've got this really nice ball joint on the head, uh, which is cool. Uh, legs splay out really, really far. They go back and forth about that much because of the design of the shoulder. Um, elbow there has a hinge and a twist. Uh, the feet um, are also on a hinge and it's got an ankle rocker pivot which is nice. And then the back legs just move up and down. There's nothing at that knee. A hinge joint at the foot and uh, they are also on a ankle rocker pivot. All four of them and we love! And this is the widest possible stance that you can get the demon dog in with both feet still flat on the floor. Uh, or all four feet, I guess. Well, this one, there we go. Um, the front legs kind of splay out, but the back ones don't. So I guess it is what it is, right? Um, so yeah, that's kind of cool, kind of interesting. You could definitely get him into some decent poses. It would have been nice if there was some hinges back here to get him in a more um, kind of lay down mode like we saw in uh, the movie in uh, Tully's apartment. That would have been cool. All right, now as far as Dana goes, uh, she also has a head that can rotate up and down. It's on a ball joint. Arms come out that far, spin around, no twist at the upper arm. She has a single hinge joint at the elbow with a twist, much like a lot of the Marvel uh, Lady Legends. Uh, hinge and twist at the wrist. She's got a diaphragm joint at the top. Again, much like the Marvel Legends ladies. Leg kicks up about that far because of the dress. Doesn't go back very far at all because of the dress. Doesn't splay out because of the dress. She has red panties. Uh, um, she's got a double jointed knee uh, and a hinge joint for her feet. And she's got that crazy ankle rocker pivot we still love. With this being her widest possible stance with both feet still flat on the floor, because of that dress, it just, it's very prohibitive on the movement of her, and, uh, yeah. So, there's that. 
as far as her articulation goes. And then stand back up here. So yeah, so that's pretty cool. And then we've got Gozer the Gozerian. Now she's got very similar articulation to Dana. Uh, head is on a swivel, moves up and down. She's got a diaphragm joint at the upper body. It looks like she's got another hinge joint, an ab crunch um, in the body, but it does not want to move and I don't want to break it. Um, it would be cool if she did I'd get her in some really neat poses. Arm swings all the way around, uh, goes up that far. She also has one of those hinge, single hinge joints with a swivel, like Marvel Legends ladies. Uh, hands are on a swivel and they spin. Um, nothing at the waist, legs kick out that far. She has a twist at the upper leg, double jointed uh, knee, which is nice, nothing at the upper boot. Uh, and then the feet are also on a hinge joint and they still got that crazy ankle rocker pivot we love! With this being her widest possible stance with both feet still flat on the floor. I don't think I've done this this often in a single review in the history of ever. So taking a closer look at the Dana Barrett figure, um, the sculpt is really, really good. I like the face sculpt. I think it looks like Sigourney Weaver. The hair looks decent. She's got that trampy 80s makeup, and it actually looks pretty good. Matches what we see in the film, making her look more like the misfits about to fight Jim and the holograms than, uh, you know, Barbie, but yeah, it is what it is. The hair, much like the Ghostbusters figure, uh, there's something about it that's a bit off. I think it's all just that brown tone. If they would have added some other paint apps in there, I think it would have looked a lot better. I love the sweeping gown she's got going on here. Uh, it's got a nice metallic-y, silky kind of look, just like it did in the film, and just works really, really well. Looking at the midsection of the figure, again, sculpted really well, that uh, nice flowing type of gown she was wearing there uh, towards the end of the film looks nice. She's got the golden sash, legs kind of coming out underneath. Um, again, it's got that metallic kind of satiny sheen going on. I think they did a good job with the paint. Sculpt on the body, uh, again, looks good, looks nice. Um, the one thing I will say would have been fun, uh, you know, just another accessory maybe to go with her, uh, a little clear piece of plastic to plug into her back to get her to levitate off of the ground, that would have been a cool accessory too. And finally, taking a look at the legs of the figure, of course she's all barefoot. Again, the flowing uh, skirt from the nightgown here looks great, love the wrinkles, um, all that looks good. Um, it's even got uh, the undertone uh, of gold uh, underneath the uh, skirt, which is a very nice, a very cool. Uh, again, and it works well. The nice thing about this figure, even though she's barefoot, she stands and poses really, really well. So taking a closer look at Gozer herself, uh, I like the sculpt. I think it looks a lot like the gymnast that played uh, the character in the movie. It's got the red eyes, the flat top, the really thin gaunt face, and the very pale makeup. Um, the sculpt on the bodysuit, very nice. Got all those like little warp type things. It's a nice metallic pearlescent pink paint. Um, and then all the other little sculpted detail that's in. Uh, the costume looks a very, a very nice. I'd like to get this under a black light to see how it shines. Um, I feel like it would look, reflect very, very well. And uh, again, I mean, it's good. It looks like Gozer, looks like the character, and you know, that's, that's all you can ask. Very evil and demonic looking. And then taking a look at the midsection of the figure, again, sculpted well. She got kind of a nice little ghost booty going on. Um, it's got all, again, the warts, the, the etching in the costume, that metallic uh, pink pearlescent paint. The hands have a nice creepy kind of vibe, very long and claw-like fingers, uh, which is very cool. Again, it makes her look very evil um, and uh, not of this world, which, I mean, she's Gozer, the Gozerian, the Destructor, and, well, she should have some creepy hands, I guess. And finally, taking a look at the legs at Gozer the Gozerian. Um, again, sculpted well. She's got the high heels that she had on in the movie. 
And um, they're filled in, though. They were, I think, actual high heels in the film itself. She's got the little kind of warts uh, on there, and the little grooves, and all the sculpt work in that outfit. And again, we got kind of that pink, uh, pearlescent paint on it that looks really nice. And again, this is another figure that stands very well, even though her feet are very, very thin. Um, it's balanced very, very nicely. So taking a closer look at Vince Clorthos, the demon dog, build a ghost figure. I, I like the way this looks. Um, it's sculpted well. It looks like the character. It's got some pretty decent articulation. I will say I wish the hind legs had the same articulation as the front. You could probably get it in a lot better poses. The one thing I will complain about this is putting the pieces in. The middle section felt like it could have snapped. It's a very hollow piece of plastic compared to the rest of the figure. And it just feels like it's, I don't know, that spine uh, could break as you're putting the parts in. Uh, at least the rear legs. The rest of the figure was kind of okay. We get this nice kind of silver paint that melds into the dark gray. His teeth and uh, gums and ears. Uh, our eyes painted all well, the horns and the claws, all that look really, really good. Um, it, I mean, it's got all the warts, everything there. Um, the tail's kind of a soft, rubbery bit that's plugged onto his little demon booty. Uh, but uh, yeah, overall, it's pretty darn good. I'd like to get him into a laying pose like we see him initially in the film, but I, I don't think any demon dog figure we've gotten allows us to do that. For comparison, here we have the Ghostbusters Ghosts figures with Mr. Sinister from Marvel Legends, and they are tiny in comparison. Uh, I guess they are in that six inch scale. Like I said in the Ghostbusters video, the Ghostbusters are on a bit on the short side and the ladies even shorter. In fact, we'll go ahead and throw one of the Ghostbusters in just to show the size comparison with Mr. Sinister. Uh, definitely a lot shorter than a lot of the Marvel Legends, but not all of them because the Marvel Legends are all over the place on their heights in comparison to uh, their characters in the comics. And I'm okay with that. And, you know, the Ghostbusters can be short. Now, I will say that the demon dog looks pretty darn cool with Mr. Sinister. I could definitely see him rocking a couple of these guys at his side. Definitely makes for a good visual. So are the ghost figures from the Hasbro Plasma Series Ghostbusters line something that you want in your Ghostbusters collection? I'm going to say yes, because you got to have ghosts to go with the Ghostbusters, right? Um, now, Gaina is not technically a ghost, but she is possessed by a ghost, so she counts for this video. And, of course, we got the Build-A-Ghost figure, uh, Vince Clorthos, the Hellhound or Demon Dog, and Goza the Gozerian. Now, I will say that uh, Gozer, with her electrical sparky things, I've got them downwards because it's very difficult to get to hold, have her hold those upright. Um, it makes her very forward heavy and makes her want to fall over, so be aware of that. If you want to have her blasting those, you're probably going to have to use a uh, figure stand. Just an FYI. Overall, I like these. I think they're pretty good entries on the Plasma Series. I do hope we get additional Plasma Series figures. I know we're getting Tully and Zool. Tully's going to have uh, the little piece that he wears in the Ghostbusters um, uh uh, firehouse where you know they're doing the tests on him and all that kind of stuff so that's either coming out soon or currently is out at the time of this recording I'm not really sure uh, but I'd like to see another wave with like more ghosts I'd like to see um, you know Winston uh, as he's being hired on we need a Janine maybe get uh, the guy from the EPA those kind of characters uh, Slimer, uh, that would be cool. Maybe the Librarian Ghost and the Taxi Ghost. All those characters would be really, really fun uh, to add to the collection. And uh, I, I hope that we get them. I think this sold pretty well. Um, I do still see them periodically up on the shelves, but they usually go pretty quick, at least around here. So what do you guys think? Leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. Um, definitely a fun series to review for me. So there they are, the ghost figures from Ghostbusters Plasma Series for 31 Horror Toys in 31 Days. See you next Wednesday. Hey guys, thanks for watching. 
to watch more Ultra Maximus, click on the links to the right. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. And jump over to Facebook and like my page to upload your video links, pictures, and join the conversation there. Click on the links in the description below.